Hi, and welcome to Our Mended Hearts, where you can follow Egan's journey and our new lifestyle. Today, I have Hamish watching a movie right next to me. So if you hear him talking, you hear the movie, or you hear some toys clanking, that is the life with the toddler. And you'll hear it in the next video, in the next video, in the next video. Today I will be talking about Egan's initial heart surgery that he had when he was eight days old and his heart condition. Egan has total anonymous pulmonary venous return and that is a huge mouthful for me so thankfully everyone calls it T-A-P-V-R. And what that means is that his pulmonary veins did not connect to the right places of his heart. and. I remember when I first went into Dallas and I was surrounded by all these doctors and I had no idea what was going on. All I knew was there's something wrong with my child's heart. I don't even know how the heart works. What the heck? And the doctor sat down with me and he said, um, how much of, he said, how much of the heart or how much do you know about the heart? And I said, Take me back to elementary because all I know is that it goes thump thump. That is it. And he said, oh, well, I brought charts. And I was like, perfect. So I brought a chart too. Um, I will go over how a normal heart works. That way you guys understand when I go into the heart condition of vegans, you're like, oh yeah, I can see how that's uh, not right. I wanna say that with PAPVR, there are four different types of TAPVR, or like categories, I should say. I don't know all of them. Um, I do know that you can have like a mix of them, and sometimes you can have a simple one, sometimes you can have the extreme. Um, Egan has two of those, and of course one of them had to be one of the least common. So, yay. So I'll just go right into how the heart works and then we can go into Egan's heart condition. So a normal heart has four chambers, which Egan does have, Egan does have four chambers. And the two top ones are the right atrium and the left atrium. And when you're talking about the oh, both of them are atria, then the bottom chambers are called ventricles. Now how the heart, I'm just gonna give a basic Basic thing, I won't go into all the details because I don't know all the details. Anyways, so the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. This is where blood comes, deoxygenated blood comes from the body into the heart. Um, I'm, if I remember correctly, correctly, the inferior vena cava is from um, your torso and down and the superior vena cava is from your head and your arms. And deoxygenated blood comes into the right atrium and then goes up into the pulmonary valve. And then the pulmonary valve splits above the heart and goes into the right lung and the left lung. And then in the lungs, the blood goes all the way down the capillaries until it gets to an air sac where, and there's like thousands of air sacs from what I've been told. <laughs> um, that is where, when we breathe in, the air sacs fill with oxygen and the blood cells gather all the oxygen, get rid of the carbon dioxide, and that's what we breathe out. And then that goes all the way until it reaches your pulmonary veins, which typically plug into back here behind the heart. And then they enter the left atrium and then that goes into the aorta, and then that to the aorta, and then it keeps going until you get into smaller veins and continues, and then that is what brings oxygen to your entire body. Egan was made special, and he does have four pulmonary veins, but none of them connected directly to his heart like they're supposed to. None of them connected to the left atrium. So, his condition having TAPVR and everything, one of his right pulmonary veins wraps around the aorta and plugs into the superior vena cava, which is, if you remember, deoxygenated blood. So now he has 50-50, so 50% oxygen, 50% deoxygenated. 
then his other right pulmonary vein and his two left pulmonary veins went down into his diaphragm and plugged into his liver, which is not right. So what they did in surgery was they were able to cut the three that were connected to his liver and surgically place them and connect them to his eight left atrium. So he is getting the oxygenated blood to his heart now. Now, why he still has complications is because sometimes when you have an extreme surgery like that and they don't, doctors can't really explain it, but it happens um, just from the healing process and how tissue works and everything like that, those veins can sometimes be, create stenosis. And stenosis is when the walls of the vein start shrinking. So the hole starts getting smaller and you don't have enough blood pumping through those veins um, at the current rate that you need. So his heart is working a lot faster and he's breathing a lot faster because his heart is working faster. So he his baseline is significantly different than a normal baby. Um, if I ever share videos, you'll see how fast he actually breathes. And um, we do have to pay attention to that. It also causes him to not get enough oxygen to the rest of his body in an appropriate amount of time. And that is why he is on oxygen to give him that little bit of boost that he needs to just breathe, to get enough oxygen and stay alive. So, he is planning to have a neck surgery and what they plan to do is try to fix the stenosis. Um, there's no guarantees that it will actually be fixed. What they can do is cut the initial um, connection that was made by the surgeon in his first surgery, physically stretch out kind of like you would do with a ballooning of a vein, but stretch out those veins, get them a little bigger, and then reconnect them to the heart and hope that it doesn't happen again. Um, it doesn't, it's not a 100% guarantee that it all work. I would say basically 50-50, I, I would say, I don't know. I don't know the numbers. So they plan to do that. And then with the vein that is wrapped around, his right pulmonary vein that is wrapped around the aorta and then plugs, plugs into the superior, superior vena cava, they notice that there is a random vein, like an extra vein, that comes off of his right pulmonary vein that's wrapped around. And what they're thinking is that they're, they will be able to bring that extra vein and connect it into the heart because he is just so tiny and the veins are so delicate that it's it's nearly impossible to take this vein and unwrap it and plug it into the heart it's just not big enough it's not it's very dangerous so you know don't even mess with it and that's why they didn't fix it in the first surgery because people with CAPVR can go their entire lives with just three veins connected to their heart. And doctors even told me that sometimes people don't even know that they have TAPVR because they're, they're, they feel fine. Everything's perfectly normal. So what we're fighting now is not the TAPVR, it's the stenosis. He still has TP, TAPVR because you know one of his right pulmonary veins is not connected to the heart. And even after his neck surgery, if they are able to connect that extra vein, he will still have TAPVR because it's not an actual pulmonary vein. So he will still have to live with this condition. We will have to put it on every medical thing. But what we're trying to fix right now is the stenosis. And it's the stenosis that is keeping him on oxygen and everything like that. So we are hoping that um, sometime next year, his lungs will be strong enough to have another surgery. Right now, they are not because we have discovered that he has been having micro aspirations, inhaling fluid 
every time that he throws up and he has really, really bad reflux. So his lungs have just not been able to get strong enough from his initial surgery just because we've had so many other different factors. We've had rhinoethrovirus, um, then we discovered the aspirations that have been happening for months. So he's constantly having fluid on his right lung and now sometimes on his left lung. So we are in the process of trying to get his lungs ready for another surgery and hopefully the next surgery will be what we need. So thank you for stopping by Our Mended Hearts. Thank you for following Egan's journey. And to all the nurses and the volunteers that and doctors that follow on this page, thank you so much for everything you do and for loving our little man while we're not there. Um, we really, really wish that we were there. And a special thank you.